Daniel, great to meet you. Thank you for joining us. Nice to be here. No, certainly good to have you. Um, I want to start by talking a little bit about um, your role. You're a technology expert with a background in coding and data. So how did you end up in actuarial work? Well, uh, so I, well, it, technology expert is a bit of a generous term. So I, I was uh, originally a software engineer. I used to actually work in the sports paying industry before I started building predictive models for football and horse racing. Right. And then I decided my life was far too easy and exciting. So I decided to sign up for the grilling process, which is the actuarial exams. Um, so although I'm now officially an actuary, I never really stopped being a software developer, really. Uh, there hasn't really been uh, a week in my professional career as an actuary where I haven't been coding in Python or VBA or um, other languages. But uh, yeah, so to answer your question, you know, I went from being a software developer to more of an actuary who builds software for other actuaries, which uh, suits me uh, quite well as I like programming and uh, I have much more fun building tools to automate work rather than actually doing the work. Okay, so it's a meeting of those two worlds, which is which is really good. Your current role is in the the research and development of actuarial technology at WTW. What does your day to day look like? Um, and if you can tell us, um, what are you, what are you working on right now at this moment? Well, WTW is the largest provider of actuarial software globally. Uh, we have five major products that we sell to clients, and as a result, you know we're always looking at different ways to make our products more more powerful and easier to use. Um, uh, my team are looking at applications of quantum computing and GPU acceleration uh, for you know making calculations faster. These are just a few things we're working on. My work personally is actually focused a bit more on Gen AI the past uh, year or two. Um, so I've been kind of looking at you know different a number of different use cases like using AI for for coding, uh, for creating documentation for helping with technology migrations, like converting like Excel models into coded models, that sort of thing. That's fascinating. Thanks for, for, for sharing that. Can you tell us a bit more about the sort of roles that technology specialists play within the actuarial space? And do you think that with, with technology being quite a sort of behind the scenes piece of work that, that technologists work is, is getting the necessary regard and prominence? Well, I wouldn't necessarily make a distinction between uh, you know, actuaries who are technologists and those aren't technologists. I feel like um, in this day and age, all actuaries have to be a technologist to some degree. You know, I think and maybe it may be sounding cliche or a truism, but I think that technology and especially AI will continue to become more and more integral to uh, actuarial work. Um, I think that there'll always be, um, well, actually, I think there will be lower demand in the future for actuaries who only know Excel, mm. um, but there'll be a higher demand for actuaries that, you know, know their way around technology and have coding skills. So although we're going to be in a future where AI is likely going to be doing more and more of the coding, you know, you'll still need actuaries who can actually read and understand code. Um, so, yeah, so I don't really think of actuary, actuarial technology as being something uh, behind the scenes. You know, I would say all the exciting things happening now in, a, in the actuarial field are are happening on the technology side. So if you really want to be on the frontier, um, you really have to be uh, very much a technologist. Yeah, and you, you mentioned your work around um, agentic AI there. You recently wrote a paper for the IFOA's Think Thought Leadership series about AI and insurers called the Agentic Model Office. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Um, and I, I guess for our for our, for some of our listeners, what AI agents really are. So AI agents are it's becoming a bit of a nebulous term, and you know every tech company with a chatbot is calling it an agent these days. But the distinction I would make um, is uh, between earlier chatbots and AI agents is really their ability to use tools to interact with their environment and and plan for long horizon tasks. And people also throw in. Uh, having memory is another sort of key capability of, of these systems. Now, I think that after the initial uh, excitement that people had over ChatGPT, I think that some people have been sort of overwhelmed, uh, sorry, underwhelmed rather, at the lack of utility of these systems in, in real life in terms of you know their work in the enterprise. So in this paper, I argue that the problem here is not actually with the AI itself, 
uh, it's a problem of the infrastructure within organizations. So companies are usually this sort of tangled web of disparate legacy systems. You know, it's very hard to navigate all these different systems as human. Um, and AI, which, you know, struggle with graphical user interfaces, will naturally struggle much more than a human to navigate these systems. Hence, in the paper, I argue that, you know, if we make it easier for the AI to interact with the digital surface of an insurer, then it'll be much easier for AI agents to reach their, their full potential. Yeah, no, brilliant. And, and look, you've talked about the, the growing roles of uh, technology, AI and data within the actuarial profession. Do you think that AI is something that all actuaries will have to increasingly embrace, understand as we move forward? Um, so I, I personally spend a lot of time working with, with AI. So, you know, I need to have quite an, a deep understanding of how these things work mm. in order to make tools with them. But I wouldn't necessarily say that actuaries uh, need to go on, need to go into this topic as deeply as I have. Um, the comparison I would make is with sort of computers and coding. You know, actuaries use computers and they write a lot of code, but they don't need to have a deep understanding of how CPUs work or how the Python interpreter works. Um, that's all a bit unnecessary. I think the the best thing actuaries can do is just experiment with the tools. Um, it's, it should be less about the theoretical and sort of getting hands on. Um, so if you're an actuary and you're just if you're just if you're doing uh, a task, um, if if it's something you've done quite a lot, if it's quite a repetitive task, you know, just take a sp step back and think, you know, is this something where I could get AI to, uh, you know, get help me to do this faster, or so I don't have to uh, do it uh, do it again. Yeah, and just finally, you co-founded the IFOA's Generative AI working party, and you're also on the International Actuarial Association's AI Task Force. What other areas are you researching at the moment or what really excites you? Well, our working party has been working on a series on the topic of agentic AI, and I think that's basically where Gen AI is going. I think um, everything uh, will be agentic going forward. Um, that's where all the sort of interesting use cases are. Uh, we recently published uh, an article um, which sort of introduces the concept of agentic uh, AI and makes it easy for sort of, an, uh, it's a good introduction for actuaries. We've also done a piece on how modeling, actuarial modeling will be impacted by AI in the future, uh, looking at how software has been impacted by these actuarial, not, not by these actuarial, by these agentic uh, coding assistants and seeing you know how similar tools would, would impact uh, actuaries. Um, and also, uh, we wrote some pieces on how actuarial careers will be impacted. And we have another piece coming out in the next couple of weeks um, about, you know, regarding the sort of topics of like ethics and, and governance issues uh, around using AI agents uh, for actuarial work. Now, um, at the International uh, Actuarial Association, uh, within the AI Task Force, you know, I have been working as, um, as part of the education and research work stream. So we've been discussing, you know, how should actuarial actuarial educational curriculum change? Um, how will actuarial careers uh, be impacted by these tools going into the future? And it's my personal opinion that, you know, AI agents will radically change a lot of careers, um, especially those in sort of highly skilled uh, knowledge work in a base professions, you know, and actuaries will, will be no exception. You know, I think that we're really at the star of a new industrial revolution on par of the computing revolution that we've seen in the past uh, couple of decades. But, you know, one saving grace is, you know, this transformation isn't going to happen overnight. There's a lot of time for uh, people to, um, you know, upskill and react. I, I think that AI is continuing to surprise everyone with uh, the new capabilities mm. that these models are able to um, achieve and be able to do each, each passing month. And I think the most dangerous thing for people to do would be to ignore it. And the most beneficial thing would just be to, to embrace the technology. Yeah. Well, Daniel, that's been a, a fantastic walk through what is a, a really interesting and exciting area of development and the impact that that might have on, on the actuarial profession and, and, and actuaries all around the world. So thank you so much for joining us and sharing your thoughts.